Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today I want to talk to you about inspiration. One of my favorite things about these tutorials is that we can have some creative ideas and maybe inspire you. One of my favorite tutorials is... George! Nick! What happened? Meet me at the studio. All right, I'll see you there. Nick! Oh my gosh, what do I do? Oh! Oh, I'm scared. Oh, oh God, be, be careful, be careful. I can't, I can't do it, I can't hold on. Just water. try and jump down, it'll oh, be okay. Oh. All right, all right, let me set the camera down. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I got you, I got you, let's try this, here we go. Ready, one, two. Uh. <sighs> you all right? No! All right, on to the tutorial. In this tutorial, essentially all of the processes are the same. So I'm going to be showing you how to take this shot right here where it looks like I'm banging on the wall and we will apply it to this shot, making it look like some spray paint and graffiti. I only want to be affecting the brick. And so we will also be removing these windows as well as these borders here and a few signs, things like that. So I did shoot this intentionally, uh, thinking about the fact that I will be using Emirato AI. So I did something really, really simple and just did a white backdrop because I know that Emirato is going to be able to easily select the sections of me that I'm wanting to key out. So we apply Emirato AI. Let's change our precision to accurate. And then we use our magic wand tool and we just draw over the section of me that I am wanting to roto. So very, very quickly. That is selected, open our tracker and we will track forward and backward. We can go ahead up to our output and we can change this to mask video. We can do a little bit of work on our blur and now you can see that we have that keyed out. That looks really, really nice. Then the next thing I did was go into our M Roto AI expansions and we can have that clip selected and we can just kind of drag over and we can see what these different expansions are going to do. Now with this said, what I actually ended up doing was export this clip out already keyed in a ProRes format that holds my alpha channel and that way it just plays a lot nicer with my computer especially once you start dropping that into the drop zones and the tracker surface and things like that so i'm going to disable my bottom clip and then you can see that we have this clip here keyed out and i'm going to export that by going to share export file change my settings to Apple ProRes. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the highest quality because I know that it's going to hold the alpha channel, but it'll also just play really nice with the effects I'm going to do. And we export just this keyed clip and then bring that back in. Now I'm just going to pull that same clip in on top and we will disable this bottom clip. And now you can see that we have that ProRes clip and it is going to play back really, really smooth. And now we start to use our Mroto AI expansions. So this one I used a good bit. So we're just going to add contour, go over to my inspector and turn off the animations in and out. And that kind of looks like that graffiti style look around me. I can change the width to be just a little bit more dramatic and we can already see how that's starting to look really nice. And in our Emirato AI expansions, I used Radiant Riff. Now by default, it does have a lot going on, so we are going to modify this as well. So animations in and out, I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. And we are going to change our colors to match our contour color. And to me, this started to give off the illusion of sort of spray paint happening. 
Now with that said, like I, I did go in and I turned a good bit of these off and down just to get the desired look that I wanted. And like I said, now when we apply this in M Tracker surface, this will start to look like just bits of spray paint kind of coming off of me there. I also did use a bit of the pre-built effects that come natively in Final Cut Pro, one of them being Comic Ink. And this is how I got the sort of cartoon look. So I'm going to drag Comic Ink on. We're going to change our style to color. And we are going to bring that above all of these other effects here. So let's just hide these really quickly, bring Comic Ink above. And then you can see that we have this sort of graffiti Comic Ink look there. And just play around with those parameters until you get the look that you think works best. So now I'm going to turn on my bottom clip and I'm going to disable this clip here because now the next thing we want to do is track this shot using M Tracker Surface. So let's go over to our effects. We will find M Tracker Surface, apply that clip. My tools are set appropriately by default and I'm going to just track the area that I know that I'm going to be. So we set those points. We go to our tracker, we can track forward and backward. All right, now that that clip is tracked, I can go over to my drop zone. We can go ahead and apply the clip that is the video that we just worked on. Go to apply clip, make sure that that's playing back. All right, we're in good shape. And we are going to want to change our distortion to appropriately match this frame. Now I'm going to actually go ahead and go over to my pan and scale and I'm just going to scale that up so that we can be working with a little bit more surface area there and then we can start to adjust our perspective. Sweet, that is looking pretty good. Now we can go down to our image settings. We can change our blend mode to see which blend mode looks the best for us. In this particular situation, I actually feel like leaving it at normal and then maybe bringing the opacity down just a little bit looks pretty good. We can come into these different effects here and we can modify our levels. So I'm going to saturate that a pretty good bit again, because we're trying to make it look like paint. We can lift the shadows a bit. Let's add a bit of blur. The intensity is a little too strong by default. So we will bring that down. We can add motion blur because we know this shot is moving and I'm going to add some grain and this grain I turned up a pretty good bit because again I really want there to be a lot of noise animating because it essentially looks like it's different takes that maybe the artist that painted me on there had done and so there are some inconsistencies between each frame and that is what I was going for. All right so now we can get back into Emroto AI so I'm going to duplicate this clip by holding option click and drag up and I'm going to delete the M Tracker surface layer off of this top clip. Let's go back to Emroto AI, apply this clip. We will change our precision from fast to accurate, and we can use our magic wand tool, and we can just start selecting these different areas that we know we want to be over top of or in front of the graffiti, such as the windows and the borders and such. Now that that is done, we can come over. I can make some very slight adjustments to my blur. And let's go ahead and change that to mask video. And now you can see that we have that shot sort of underneath those areas. And it looks like graffiti has been applied 
really nice. The final step, we can either add an adjustment layer and then add M film luck, or we can make this a compound clip. It's very simple to just make a compound clip. So we'll just highlight all of these so that they can stay together. Option G, compound clip. And since we have that clip highlighted, we can go to M film look and take a look at some of the different looks that we'd be able to get. I am always a huge fan of Aurora. I don't know why, but that one is just my favorite. So we can apply this, make some quick adjustments by turning off the flare. We can open that letterbox up just a bit. We can go to our levels and we can make some adjustments to our levels if we would like. And I would like to do a position offset so that our black bars are not cutting too much off. So we will just go here and bring that over. And there you have it. Now again, it is essentially the same process throughout each of the clips that we created. I did use a few additional motion VFX tools to create these looks, such as M Music Video for the frame drop look. And I did set some keyframes on Y so that we could make it look like I dropped down from the building. So again, the purpose of this tutorial is not only to show you how to use these tools, but maybe inspire something that you could do for your future videos. If you have any ideas or if you have any questions, please drop a comment below. We would really like to start answering those in some future videos. So once again, this is George Edmondson with MotionPerfects.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.